Hello and welcome to Lesson 15-3. Here we're going to work on analyzing and graphing the relationships that we find in our corresponding terms in a table. Let's go ahead and check out our short video lesson here and then we can begin with our notes and our guided practice. How can you generate and graph numerical patterns? Think about this question during the lesson. Jill earns $5 per hour babysitting. Robin earns $15 per hour teaching ice skating lessons. The girls made a table using the rule add 5 to show Jill's earnings and the rule add 15 to show Robin's earnings. Complete the table. Compare their earnings and graph the ordered pairs of the corresponding terms. What values complete the table? Select your answer. For four hours of work, Jill earns $20 and Robin earns $60. You can look for a relationship between the corresponding terms in the patterns. Compare the numbers in Jill's and Robin's sequences. Each sequence begins with zero. Why does each sequence begin with a zero? Each girl earns zero dollars for zero hours of work. What is the relationship between the amount of money Jill earns and the amount Robin earns for the same number of hours? Robin earns three times as much as Jill earns. Each term in Robin's pattern is three times as great as the corresponding term in Jill's pattern. Generate ordered pairs from the total amount Jill and Robin have earned after each hour. What does the ordered pair, 15, 45, represent? For th three hours of work, Jill earns $15 and Robin earns $45. Graph the ordered pairs. How do you graph the point 5, 15? Start at the origin. Go right to 5 on the scale on the x-axis and then up to 15 on the y-axis scale. Graph the remaining ordered pairs. Now you know how you can generate and graph numerical patterns. All right, let's go ahead and get into our notes and our guided practice. Now, our focus question during this lesson is going to be, how can you generate and graph numerical patterns? So you can take a look at the patterns that are found in the corresponding terms to find out the rule and then extend that pattern. Then you can graph the pairs of corresponding terms as ordered pairs that you generated by extending that pattern. So what does that mean? That means you're going to use the rule and you're going to follow it until you get as far as you need to get. Then after you've done that, you're going to take the numbers that you generated that you made following this pattern and following this rule and you're going to use those as your x and y coordinates to graph them on a coordinate grid so our first example says a bakery can fit either six regular muffins or four jumbo muffins in each box each box will contain either regular or jumbo muffins that means there's no mix it's going to have either all regular or all jumbo Complete the table to show how many of each muffin will fit in two, three, or four boxes. Then generate ordered pairs and graph them. So we created our data table. We have the regular muffins and we have the jumbo muffins. And how much is going to fit in one box, two box, three box, three boxes, four boxes, and I extended it out even to five boxes. So in one box, there's six regular or four jumbo. In two boxes, it's going to be six plus six or six times two, which is 12 regular or four times two, which is eight jumbo. For three boxes, it's going to be six times three, which is 18 regular, or 
four times three, which is 12 jumbo. And then for four boxes, 24 regular or 16 jumbo by following that same rule and same with the five boxes. So the rule here is there are two thirds as many jumbo muffins as there are regular muffins. Now, how do we know this? We know four divided by six is going to give us a simplified fraction of two thirds. Eight over 12 simplifies to two thirds. 12 over 18 simplifies to two thirds. 16 over 24 simplifies to two thirds. So we know our rule or the difference between our corresponding terms is that the regular muffins, or sorry, the jumbo muffins are two thirds as many as the regular muffins. So we're going to start graphing these ordered pairs. So I wrote out the ordered pairs over here on the side of my graph. I created my graph. I labeled my axes. My x-axis is the regular size muffins. My y-axis is the jumbo muffins. And I put a title for the muffin boxes at the top of my coordinate grid. So my, my first point was at 6, 4. So I went across six regular muffins for every group of four jumbo muffins. Then 12 regular muffins for each group of eight jumbo muffins. 18 regular muffins for every group of 12 jumbo muffins. 24 regular muffins for each group of 16 jumbos. And then if you wanted to extend it out to five boxes, 30 regular muffins for each group of 20 jumbo muffins. So we created the ordered pairs using the amount of jumbo and regular muffins in each box. So we use the information here in our data table. Then we graph them as ordered pairs on the coordinate grid. Now remember to always label your axes to show which one is measuring which. So I had to tell you which one was measuring the regular and which one was me measuring the jumbos. And you add a title to your coordinate grid so that you know what your graph is about. Now remember to find the rule and look at how the corresponding coordinates are related and then check to see if the rule works for the ordered pairs uh, of all of the other numbers. So just because you found a rule that fits one group of numbers or one ordered pair, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to apply to the rest. So if I'm looking at my first ordered pair, six, four, I can say, well, six minus four is two. So maybe the rule is minus two. There's two fewer jumbo muffins than regular muffins in each box. But if I try to extend it to my next ordered pair, 12 minus eight is not equal to two. So that's not going to be my rule. It doesn't work. So I have to find something else. How else can I get from six to four? Well, six uh, is two thirds of six is going to be four. So if I did six times two thirds, that gives me four. So let me try it on the other one. Now, 12 times two thirds did give me eight. So that worked. 18 times two thirds did give me 12. So that worked as well. So since I was able to apply that rule to multiple ordered pairs and the rule worked, I know that that's going to be the rule that relates my, uh, my numbers in my data table. So the rule to get from the X to the Y is multiplied by two thirds. Let's take a look at another example. It says every month Leonard pays $240 for a car payment and he spends $60 each month for a gym membership. Write an ordered pair for how much he spends in 12 months for car payments and his gym membership. So I know that he spends $240 a month for the car and $60 a month for the gym. So to figure out how much it is for a year, I'm going to have to multiply each one of those times 12. So 240 times 12 gave me 2,880. 60 times 12 gave me 600, 720. So the ordered pair for the car payment and the gym membership after 12 months is going to be at point 2,880 and 720. Now, in the example on page 602, what ordered pair would you write for how much Jill and Robin have earned after five hours? So remember, if Jill earns $5 an hour and Robin earns $15 an hour, then after five hours, they would each have earned five times five and then 15 times five. So Jill would have earned five times five, which is $25. And Robin would have earned 15 times five, which is $75. And so the ordered pair that we can create for that is 25. 75. So you would go across 25 on the X axis and up 75 on the Y axis. For number two, Ben says that the relationship is that Jill earns one third as much as Robin. Do you agree? Explain. 
So yes, Jill's earnings are always one third of Robin's. So Jill earns $5 for every $15 that Robin earns and 15 divided by three is five, or you can say 15 times one third is equal to five. For numbers three and four, it says Sam and Eric record the total number of miles they walk in one week. Sam walks two miles each day and Eric walks four miles each day. What ordered pair represents the number of miles each walked after seven days? So to figure out Sam's walks after seven days, you have to do the two miles from each day times seven, which would give you 14 miles. And Eric's four miles each day times seven, which would give you the 28 miles. So the ordered pair would be 14, 28. What relationship do you notice between the total number of miles Sam and Eric have each walked? Eric walks twice as much or two times as many miles as Sam. So if Eric walks four, Sam walks two. If Eric walks eight, Sam walks four, and so on and so on. So it's always, uh, Sam is always walking half as much as Eric. Eric is always walking twice as much as Sam. All right, that takes us to the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.